Hello and welcome to this online video lecture about intermolecular forces. There are three intermolecular forces that we'll be learning about in this class and that you'll be responsible for. They are hydrogen bonding, the dipole-dipole force, and the van der Waals force. Now, intermolecular forces are forces of attraction that happen between molecules. That's why it's called inter, which means between, and molecular. All three of these forces are quite a bit weaker than the forces of a bond that hold atoms together, whether it's a covalent bond or ionic bond. Um, so let's let's write that down. Weaker But they are still really, really important, and especially in terms of things like determining whether at a given temperature uh, a substance is a solid, liquid, or gas. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, define each one, maybe give a little example, and then we're going to examine the relative strength of these relative to each other, not, not to bonding, because they're all weaker than bonds. And then we'll kind of relate that to what that means about whether something's probably going to be a solid or a liquid or, or a gas at a given temperature. So let's get started. We'll start with um, hydrogen bonding. Oops, forgot my why. Hydrogen bonding is pretty important to you and life on our planet, whether you know it or not, because it happens between the molecules of water, and it gives water some pretty important properties. That's just kind of an interesting little fact. Okay, so what's hydrogen bonding? Well, hydrogen bonding happens between highly polar molecules um, that contain hydrogen and nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So, that's why it has to have the hydrogen. It's hydrogen bonding and one of these three. So it's either it's either got to be nitrogen or um, it can be oxygen or it can be fluorine. I'll stick it down here. Fluorine. So, oh geez man, I totally messed up that F. So it can be hydrogen with nitrogen, it can be hydrogen with oxygen, or it can be hydrogen with fluorine. And what happens is when you have molecules that have those things in them, it creates a really, really, really strongly polar molecule. So uh, I'll just stick with a water, for example. You've got in water, there's an oxygen. I'll use orange for that. And then bonded to the oxygen, you've got two hydrogens. And w the reason why it's these specific atoms is because the oxygen is much, much, much better at attracting electrons than the hydrogen is. And so what happens is this end of the molecule where the oxygen's at by itself, it becomes pretty strongly negative. Oops, got the wrong color there. Pretty strongly negative. And then each one of the hydrogens becomes pretty strongly positive. And the reason why that happens is because all of the electrons are spending way more time over here with the oxygen and they're spending way less time over here with the hydrogen. So because the electrons are over here more often and the electrons are negative, they make this part of the molecule negative. And since the hydrogens are not getting the negative electron very often, they end up being a little bit more positive. And so what happens with water molecules then, when they start to kind of associate with each other, just draw them here without the lines, is that the oxygen of one water molecule will be pretty strongly attracted to the hydrogens of another. So the negative part of one 
oxygen molecule will be pretty strongly attracted to the relatively positive part of another. So remember that oxygen part's negative and the hydrogen parts are positive. And because it's hydrogen with oxygen, right, hydrogen with oxygen, it's strong enough to be what's called hydrogen bonding. So that's hydrogen bonding. It's the strongest of the three intermolecular forces. It's still not as strong as a covalent bond or an ionic bond, but it's 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 much stronger than much much stronger than van der Waals forces and stronger than dipole dipole forces. So that's that's it. That's how you identify it. If there's hydrogen with nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine, that molecule is going to have hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces between them. So let's go to the next one, which is dipole dipole. And so dipole dipole are kind of like a weaker version of the hydrogen bonding force. It's basically a force of attraction between the 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 positive the kind of positive ends and the kind of negative ends of polar molecules. Now, you may remember this from first semester, but these <clears throat> negative and positive ends of polar molecules are called dipoles. So positive and negative ends, ends are poles, they're called, and there's two ends, a negative and a positive, and so those ends are called dipoles. And so the reason why this is called the dipole-dipole force is because it's an attraction between two dipoles. So the example that I'm going to use here is, um, uh, let's use ammonia. So ammonia has, a n no, I can't use ammonia because that's hydrogen bonding, I'm sorry. We'll use hydrogen chloride. So hydrogen chloride has a hydrogen, and it's bonded to a chlorine. And the chlorine is much better at getting the electrons, and so it becomes a negative dipole. And the hydrogen is much better, at, uh, much worse at getting the electrons, so it becomes a, a positive dipole. And so that means if you've got two or more hydrogen chloride molecules, the positive hydrogen end will be somewhat attracted to the negative chloride end of another molecule. And that attraction is the dipole-dipole force. Dipole, dipole. So this happens, the, the key here is that this occurs between polar molecules. But you saw the mistake I almost made. I picked a polar molecule that had hydrogen and nitrogen. But since it's got hydrogen and nitrogen, I couldn't use that example because in that case, you'd call it hydrogen bonding. So anytime you've got a polar molecule and it's not hydrogen bonding, then you're going to have dipole, dipole forces. Now the last one, named after the scientist that figured it out, you can tell Van der Waals is kind of an interesting name. He was not from America. <laughs> he lived a very long time ago. He was Dutch, and so Van der Waals is a, is a Dutch name. And this is, I think, really a super interesting thing. And uh, there's a really neat connection with geckos, with Van der Waals force, which I think is also very interesting. But let's kind of get to what it is first, and then if we have time, we'll talk about those interesting little connections. So Van der Waals force. So the key with Van der Waals force is this, this force happens between even nonpolar molecules.
So you might be asking yourself, if they're nonpolar and there's no positives or negatives, how could there possibly be any attraction? And the answer to that is that electrons are, if you think of them as a particle, are constantly moving. So uh, let's think of uh, a molecule of methane. It's got a carbon, it's got four hydrogens attached to it, and this is a non polar molecule. Uh, there's no positive or negative end here because of the four hydrogens that surround it. And let's imagine that there's a, a carbon with four hydrogens right next to it. Now, van der Waals force is kind of like a name that includes several different kinds of forces, but they all occur kind of for the same reason, and that is that the electrons within these molecules are always moving around. So let's just say that the electron that's usually hanging out here with this carbon, just for a moment, for a brief instant, is somewhere else in this molecule. What that's going to do is it's going to make this hydrogen be just ever so slightly, for just the briefest of moments, it's going to make it be positive. Well, if we have a positive area here, that's going to attract negative things from over here. And so what happens is that that might draw an electron maybe from another hydrogen just for, again, the briefest of moments, kind of over here. And that would make this area for the briefest of moments to be kind of negative. Now, this happens very quickly. The electrons don't stay. It's not a permanent thing. And that means that van der Waals forces are very fleeting, very brief. Uh, and, and, and they're very, very weak. They're very weak forces. But what happens is that if you have enough molecules where this is happening, the very, very weak forces do add up and can become s significant. So that's the key. You've got nonpolar molecules, and you've got the momentary arrangement, the brief momentary arrangement of the electrons at that moment can sometimes create very small positive and negative charges that can cause the atoms to attract. And then that attraction is would be a van der Waals force. Van der Waals force. So well, there's a little bit of time left. I, I really think van der Waals forces are kind of interesting because um, there's a little lizard called a gecko. And there's a gecko right there. That's what they look like. And they have these kind of interesting little feet um, with these kind of spade-shaped toes, and geckos can walk on walls and ceilings. And for a long time, we didn't know why that was. And it took science a very long time to figure out what was going on here. There, there's no adhesive on the toes, there's no suction cups or anything like that. Um, and so we couldn't figure out why these things could walk up ceilings and, and walls and things like that. And so eventually we figured it out. And it has to do with the toes on their feet. So if you kind of look closely at the toes on their feet, you'll see this. And you'll notice that all of these toes have little ridges. And that's really interesting. There's no adhesive there. They're not suction cups. And so eventually, once science had the ability to look even closer at those, it started to see things like this. And so each ridge, when you look closer at it, is actually composed of a bunch of little kind of fibers. And as we had the capability to look even closer, we saw that each one of those little fibers kind of split on the end like that. And so literally what's happening is that the molecules that make up these little fibers are generating van der Waals force um, with the particles in the wall or the ceiling or whatever the little gecko is climbing on. So these tiny little fibers that you see, these tiny little fibers in the tips here generate van der Waals forces against the molecules in the wall and that's what allows geckos to climb on the wall. That's it for this online lecture. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in class.